Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. He thought I was. He thought you was worthy. Right. Yes. Worthy. So he sacrificed his life. Yes. So I could be free. No more condemnation yes. in my life. Yes. Oh, that ain't pride. That's Jesus. Yes. That ain't pride. That's Jesus. Yes. If he said it, that made it so. Praise God. Yes. Oh, praise you, Lord. He sacrificed. His life so that you and I could be free. Yes. Glory be to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm just going to encourage today. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. I just want to encourage you today, and I'll close it out, and then we'll just go home. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus. As I stand again before your people and you, my God, I just ask that you help me to say what you would have me to say today in love, in grace, and let your mercy show through me. God, I thank you that it's because of your grace and your mercy you went to the cross so that we could be free today. It's because of your grace and your mercy that we are delivered and set free. It's liberty in your grace and your mercy. And you say, where the spirit of liberty is, there's freedom in your house. Yes, yes. So let us be free today, God, to worship you, to praise you, to give you glory for all that you have done in our life. God, we ask that you show yourself strong in this house because we come today, God, not to hear from me, but to hear from you. Speak, Lord, because your servant is listening. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He is, he is just so good and very good. Great and very great. And if I had a larger vocabulary, I could probably think of another word, but that's okay. My heart knows who he is. Amen. Yes, yes. Bless the Lord for Pastor James being in the house. My heart yes. Yes. Oh, we have people that come and people that go, but their love will be there forever. Yes. Once God connects you, no matter when you go, that love is going to be there forever. That's kind of what he told us. His love endures forever. So if you got that God kind of love, you can't help but love your sisters and your brothers. But that ain't the word, that ain't the word today. Amen. So, so uh, of course, I, 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 I've been ripping and running this week and uh, not doing the things that are right. And, and so last night, I said, Lord, you know I'm speaking to all right? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> So at the end of the night, I'm getting ready to, to lie down for the evening. And as I pull the covers back, I hear this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God until salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And that's all I need to hear. Okay, Lord, that's what we're going tomorrow. You just go with me. <laughs> if you don't go, I ain't going. But, but understand, sometimes, I, I mean, because I try to make something happen. And there's things that I would like to talk about and, and things that I've seen and I've heard. But it's not until you get the option of God that you know that's it. That's it. You know, I don't have to think no more. I ain't going to study no more. I just pulled out the scripture and start going. And, and then what he did was reveal things again because he's that revealing kind of God. Yes. If there's anybody out there who don't realize that God can reveal the deepest things yes. to you, just spend that time with them. Let it be quiet. They have a listening ear. Sometimes close this. Because sometimes we pray to God so much, we're just praying and talking, praying and talking, and God said, I'm ready to speak. <laughs> Be quiet. You ask for an answer, let me answer you. Amen. So we have to listen. So, so it takes me back to, to Paul, and as Paul was, <laughs> as Paul was talking to the 
church, and, and he was traveling, and he had to journey his job after everybody knows the story of Paul going up there, and, 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 and Paul was going, and, and he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, and, and he was riding the horse, and all of a sudden, he gets knocked off. And he could have just said, my horse threw me, but he knew that it was different. And what he said was amazing because this is a man that persecuted the church. But at this particular moment, when he falls off the horse, he recognizes who Jesus is. He calls him Lord. See, sometimes, I don't say everybody can be knocked off the horse, but sometimes we need to come off our high horse and recognize that he is Lord and we're just flesh. And so when we're in our flesh and we're not moving where we think we need to move, we need to stop and listen and ask God, where is your vision for my life? I know so-and-so is doing great around the corner, down the street, and up the road, but what do you want? I may never be T.D. Jake's daughter. That's okay. He didn't design for me to be. As he didn't design for you to be anyone else. No. So when it's time for us to have that spiritual connection and encounter with him, for him to speak to you and he tells you what he needs you to do, don't think about somebody else. The message today is you don't look good enough. You don't worry me. He picked you out right. to do what he has called you to do. Stop comparing yourself to someone else. I can imagine Paul was a very eloquent speaker. But yet we hear that Moses had a son. But they both did great things in Christ. Yes. Because they realized that it wasn't in them that they was doing these things, but they was doing it unto the Lord. So in Romans 1 and 16, when he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, because I'm not the power, but the power is in the gospel. Yeah. So when we pray and ask for God, we don't stand and say, okay, I'm praying and asking for something, but when I get to the point that I can do it, then I will do it. No, what did the Lord say? Maxine always said this, who report when you believe? Do you believe? Or are we just uttering the words? See, because there's a difference in the believer than somebody who just says, I know who Jesus is. No, there's a knowing, there's a difference. There's an option and an anointing in the believer. And he says, I am not ashamed. So, so what does being ashamed mean? Okay, so it means being without, I am not ashamed, being without guilt. Jesus died and removed us from the guilt of sin and death. So once I became the believer, all that guilt, all those things that that adversary comes and whispers in your ears does not apply to you anymore. See, so you have to stand in a different place once you become a believer in Christ. That you can't be 50-50 and say, okay, I know I got Jesus, but I got all this other stuff too. Amen. So that just meant he didn't do what his word said that he did. Either he took your sins away and forgave you, or you just still in your sins. You have to know within your knowing who Christ is in your life. Amen. Yes. And then Galatians 3 and 28 says, because there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now just knowing that should make your spirit rejoice. I am one in Christ. I'm not set off to the side. I'm not a stepchild. I'm not, I'm not somebody who is who's out on the outside of the kingdom of God because he has brought us all in. And now that I am in Christ, I can do the things of Christ. That I have to believe. That you have to believe. You have to know in your knowing that if he said that you can do it, it's a done deal. But 
what stops us. What holds us back? As I said before, if I'm not ashamed, then I'm not guilty. So I am now self-conscious of who I am in the Lord. Not prideful, not vain, but knowing that if I say that I am a child of God, the things of God belong to me on this earth and in heaven. But if I doubt, we have to deal with that thing called doubt. What causes me to doubt? What causes me not to move? What causes me not to go? Because Paul had to go out and preach the gospel to everyone that he ran in contact to. Now, I'm not asking you to, to be the door-to-door -door person. That's not what I'm saying. But how many opportunities, little small tidbits of opportunities have we had with that person sitting next to us somewhere? Or maybe just at the checkout stand. Or the person who is right behind me and, and he wants to strike up a conversation. There's nothing wrong with men mentioning the name Jesus. Sometimes when you just say Jesus, it kind of breaks the mold and they start talking to you about what they know about God. Yes. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because it's his power, not mine. And then see, what I had to learn early on and had to be chastened by pastor is stop thinking that you're doing this on your own. Stop thinking that you're the person that's making this happen. You can lay hands on a hundred people and they all get up out the wheelchairs, but you did absolutely nothing. That's what the problem is. Because we get in pride and we think we did. And if it don't happen the second time, well, I ain't going to do it no more because nothing happened. And then they're going to think, I'm not who I say I am. I'm not the prophet, the prophet, the teacher, the preacher, the evangelist. We step out of pride and we trust that he does the work. See, we lay down the, the seed and we let him water yes. and manifest what's going to come up in our yes. us. So if I go lay hands on the sick and they don't get up, I did the work. It's not my job to raise them up. Yes. That's what the difference is. See, I don't have to be ashamed. If nothing will happen in my sight, because see, I don't know it's my sight. When I leave, it's no longer my responsibility. It's God's responsibility. That's right. And we start looking for him to make these things happen in our sight. Not so that we can get a pat on the back, but that God can get the glory. That's right. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Tell me what to say. Tell me where to go. Tell me who to meet. Because once I say it and walk away, it ain't on me. It's on him. Greater is he that is in me that allows me to do those things. But once I break the ice, then it's over with. And, and, and we all get this thing called nervousness. Don't get me wrong. Boy, it was hard to come in this morning because I know some of the things that we talked about last night was going to come out. But this nervousness come up, so what I do, I kind of walk the floor. I'm like, cool. Okay, God. Okay, God. But once I get here, I got to let it go. I have to say what thus says the Lord because then it's going to be back on me. That's the one thing that I have to worry about. If you don't do and if you don't say yes. what he asks you to say. Yes. Because there are souls that are dying every day that we're responsible for. Much is given, much, much is required. Is and we know that the hardest people to witness to is your family. Why? Because they see you as that little girl that grew up. And you want to preach to me now? My sisters jokingly, I guess they jokingly, they ain't paying me no ties. They jokingly call me pastor now. My oldest sister, pastor, pastor, my little sister, pastor Vader. I count that as a joy, but I also have a life to live before them. Yes. Because they're watching you closer than anyone else. Sometimes they see you fall. Or to sometimes to say, maybe there's some realness in this. But maybe there's something in what they're talking about. See, we are accountable for those that are watching us. So we can't be ashamed of somebody we say we know without a shadow of a doubt. 
I told somebody the other day, I had a conversation with my son a while back. And uh, he was telling me something. I know what it was, I know Peter. And, um, and I just said to him, I can't change my mind. Because I know him. I experienced him. Yes. He's healed my body. He's taking care of my finances. Yes. He restored my soul. He delivered me out of mess. See, you can't change that if you haven't experienced him. You can know him all day long, but you have to have an experience with my God to know all that he can do. And when his glory and his presence falls on you, you want to stay there. So I can't be ashamed. I can be nervous, but I can't be ashamed. Because if I'm ashamed that I'm saying what you did for me wasn't good enough, and I'm not going to stand up for you, even though you stood up for me. You died for me. Not only did he die, and I don't mean to skip over, but not only did he die, he was brutally, brutally beaten for me. He didn't just lay down and die by the grace of God, and some of us will, and I won't be one of them. But, but, but he was beaten and spit on. And, 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 and he was laughed at. Oh my God, how many of us are afraid to witness because we're going to be laughed at or ridiculed or talked about? But he was laughed at, mocked for my sake and yours. I can't be ashamed of the gospel because he did too much for me. They pinched him in his side for me, they nailed him to the cross for me. How can I be ashamed? Yes. Yes. It's like a mother with her children when they mess up. And you got to call the lawyer. <laughs> you know, even though you got to go to court, I'm not ashamed of my child. That's my child. And God said, I'm not ashamed of my children. You're my children. I love you. My son died for you. Don't be ashamed. Because no matter what we do, God is there with us. And he will give you the words, the Bible says, at the exact same time that you need them. You just got to open your mouth. <laughs> but, but understanding when I said that people are watching us, in, in Acts, 3, Acts 9, 3 through 7, it says, as he journeyed, he came near the mayors, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? He didn't say, Saul, why are you persecuting my church? He said, Saul, you're persecuting me when you persecute my church. The adversary is persecuting him when he persecutes you. So down in itself to give you boldness that if you step in front of the devil, God is right there with you. Say what he tells you to say. Speak what he tells you to speak. Lay hands when he tells you to lay hands. Amen. Because he says, this is me standing right here. So why do you persecute me? And he said, thou art thou Lord and the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. Look at who you're standing with. If nobody will go with you, look at who you're standing with. If nobody is, is, is going on that mission trip or, 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 or discipleship in the streets and, and, and nobody else is standing there, just think, uh, he's right here with me. And then he had to ask Saul of a question. Isn't it hard to kick against the pricks? Have you not realized, isn't it hard to fight against me? I am the Lord thy God, who made heaven and earth. So what shall I be afraid of? If he's for me, who can be against me? Yes. Not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is the power of God. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. And in verse 6 says, And he trembling and his God said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? 
Now, he was going to kill God's people. But in that second of knowing him, experiencing him, realizing there was something greater than him, he said, okay, Lord, now what you want me to do? And how many of us have said that to God, whether we be in worship or whether we be in prayer, whether we be talking to the Lord, 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 what is it you want me to do? What, what is my calling? What is your vision for me? Well, what do you want me to go? What is it? What is it? What is it? And then he tells you softly what it is. And then we say, I can't do that. What else do you want me to do? <laughs> I, 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 that, that's too hard. <laughs> what else do you want me to do? So, so if you think about it, you put yourself in Paul's, Paul's soft place, soft Paul's place, and he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said unto him, rise and go into the city, and he shall be told thee what thou must do. Somebody's going to tell you, but I got to get you right first. Somebody's going to tell you. Then Seven says, and this is what I want to get you, and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. See, that's why it's hard. Mm. That's why it's interesting when you speak about God or when you're trying to deliver a message or, or when you're trying to witness to somebody about Jesus and you tell them about how great he is and they say, but where is he? Mm -hmm. I, I can't see him. Uh, I can't touch him. I can't. How can you serve a God if you can't see? And that's where that thing called faith comes. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. See, they were looking for a tangible person that I will serve him if I could see him. But what did he tell Thomas? Blessed are those who love and serve and keep my commandments who have not seen me. Then somebody who took and put their finger in my side. We have to believe him through faith. And Paul was willing to do that. But can you imagine the soldiers behind Paul saying, what is going on? And who is he talking to? But if you've ever experienced the voice of God and the unction of God in your spirit, you know without a shadow of doubt where it came from. And then what he says to you is manifested and it becomes tangible. Then you know for a fact that where it came from. Oh, I love those blessings from God when there's nobody but me and him, and I don't tell anybody else, but then he manifests, and I say, God, nobody has knew that. How do you know to tell that person to bring me that thing that I needed? He just a miracle working. God. Because he thought you was worthy. But just like Paul placed his confidence in the gospel of Christ, so can we. We can proclaim with boldness and truth that God has revealed his word with no fear that our confidence is misplaced. With boldness, we can do that. Not loud as I am, I'm asking you to be me. You can testify just as sweet. You can witness. You ever heard Teresa get loud? Never, ever. <laughs> have I ever heard her above a whisper? But she has the sweetest testimony and the biggest heart. So you don't have to be, remember before, you don't have to be like me. You gotta be like him. Amen. And do what he tells you, you to do. Amen. Yes. And you have to have the confidence that no matter what we do, Romans 10 and 11 says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. I don't care if you lay hands and they never got up. Don't be ashamed. Because you can't do it anyway. It's God's decision. It's his will we live by. You just do what he asks you. But he says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame in Romans 10 and 11. Because the gospel of righteousness was revealed by him. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That when he sees us, he don't see those inks and and and, umps and them things that's inside of us that we're still fighting with. He sees the righteousness of his son. And you walk and you stand in that righteousness. You look in the mirror and you say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes, yes. And no one can take that away. Once we 
Once we obtain our salvation through Christ, the enemy can't take it away. He can fight as he told Saul, why do you keep against the prayer? Why do you persecute me? We can tell the devil that, why do you keep trying to persecute me? You can't do nothing to me. This does not belong to you. I am no more my own, but I belong to him. So the darks that you're sitting, they have to fall off. <laughs> they have to fall off. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So understand, therefore, when we accept the gospel of Christ, he or she will never be able to live a righteous life without knowing who he is. You can be good all day long, but you have to accept Christ to be righteous. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. And even in that, when my God has no respect of person, I don't have to take down from anyone because he's made me heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You can't get any higher than that. So I don't have to take down and say, I'm not good enough. Oh, yes, you're good enough. You're worthy enough. He loved you enough to die for you. So I walk in faith, and I know that it's embarking on a journey. And I know that it's embarking on a voyage because every day that I get up, I don't know which direction I may have to go. But I know I have to go. I don't know who I may encounter, but whoever I encounter, let me live a life in front of them. Don't let me go out in the streets and act one way and then come back and try to profess God another way. I will not bring shame upon my Savior. And you say, yeah, but we can't be perfect all the time. You're absolutely right. We can't be perfect, but we can be perfect in Him. Even Peter. Deny our Savior. See, that's where the I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ come from, from Paul, is when Peter said, I don't know him. Oh, yes, you are. You should be the one that's been walking with him. We've seen y'all at the church. You know, it's down at the tabernacle. And no, that wasn't me. He just said, it must be my plan or something, because I, I don't know him. But yet, even in his denial, and that's kind of what it is when we won't say who we are in Christ to the world. It's kind of like the denial of Peter. I don't, I really don't know him. I, I know I know him in church. Because <laughs> you can't beat me shouting. I know I know him in church, but do I know him outside of the four walls? Yes. That's what the world needs to see. Peter said, I don't know him. And then he ran away. But blessed God, full of love and mercy, came back to Peter. Let me clarify something, Peter. Do you, do, do you love me? Lord, you, you know I love you. Isn't that what we say? <laughs> Lord, in here, you know I love you, but don't send me out there. I'm some vultures out there, for real, though. But don't send me out there. But, but Peter, do you, do you love me? Lord, you, you know I love you. No, Peter, not like your friend. I know how you like your friend. You know, sometimes y'all good and sometimes y'all not. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. Witness to the word. Share the gospel of good news. Tell them about me. Don't let them die in their sin. Peter, do you love me? Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are souls that are depending on us. To let them know about our Savior, this man that we say we love so much, that we worship on Sunday morning. Peter, do you love me enough to lay down your life? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Say I want you to. Walking by faith means that we are embarking on a journey. And, and, and we have to be mindful of our thoughts, our words, and our actions. We have to be mindful of what we say. That we don't offend others. Of our actions. Of what we're doing. 
there's a life that we have to live. And some people, and I probably was, I probably was one of them, because I, I was on a journey. I thank God for a praying mother. Because when I was when I when I was in the church, but I wasn't in Christ. I would dip and, and dab and and probably do more dipping. But 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 I was in at the church, but I wasn't listening to the word. I, I was unlearned, I was ignorant, if you allow me to say that. Because going to the church never made me safe. Going from church to church to church did not make me safe. But when I heard the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ who came to this earth to save me out of my sins and to give me eternal life, something changed inside of me. And I was never the same. Something changed inside of me and I wanted to walk differently. I wanted to love differently. I wanted to know more about my Savior. I no longer wanted to deny him. But I wanted to amplify him. When we walk by faith, our minds, our thoughts, our words, our actions, our deeds, they have to change. This is when we understand that, that as we meditate on his goodness, and we trust him with all of our heart. And we are persistent in our belief. Then God can use us in every area of our life. The fivefold ministry gifts in this house needs to be in effect. Amen. Yeah. The evangelists yeah. need to evangelize. Yeah. The teachers need to teach. The preachers need to preach. And the prophets, where are you? It's time for the fivefold ministry to be effective in the church. God gave us that for a reason, so that we can edify the body of Christ. But if we're stagnant, if we stand still, and we don't allow God to use the gift that He has given us, then souls that are lined up, that the enemy is just pulling. You ever played in, in school, y'all had a tug of rope thing, and, you, and then you pull one side, and the other person pulling the other side, and, and then can you vision the enemy pulling, pulling somebody over here, and then you're supposed to be pulling somebody over here, but then you let go of your rope. And if you can visualize the hole that they are going into, because if hell has enlarged herself, that just tells me that there's more people going to hell than they're going to heaven because those that should be preaching the gospel are afraid to preach it. Let go your rope. Because we're allowing people to die because we're ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and because it's only the power of God. Every time I say, I won't, and he told me, you will. But later, do you love me? Yeah, Lord, I love Feed my sheep. Sometimes feeding the sheep may be hard, but feed my sheep. Because if we can change one mind, one soul, one body, and turn it over to the Lord, we gain one, and the angels rejoice with us in heaven that a soul was saved. How important is it that you tear up heaven why you on this earth? How important. See, there's the It's important to understand why we're here. Not just to have church. Not just to sing a song. Tell somebody about the good news. Share it with just somebody. Write it on a piece of paper. I don't care. Send it in a card. Just plant the seed. And then allow God to do what only he can do. 
Understanding that the gospel teaches us a vital lesson. It's where we learn the peace of God, the love of God, the compassion of God, the truth of God, the understanding of God as he transforms our lives. So if any of those things are missing, we can pray for you after church. The peace of God, the love of God, the compassion of God, the truth of God, the understanding of God transforms your life when you truly give your life to Christ. We gain so much, we understand the personal part of the truth of forgiveness, selfishness, less, yes, unconditional love for the most part. Unconditional love and intimacy at a whole different level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I get my toes stepped on too when somebody's preaching to me, but you know, you need to get up, shake it off. Decide. Because see, living for God is really a decision. When I went to the altar and I gave my life to Christ, I made a decision to live for him. So it's a conscious decision every day to stay in the place that he has called me to be. It's a conscious decision. I don't wake up today and say, well, today I'll be saved and tomorrow I won't. It's a conscious decision every day to live for Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. In whom? In whom? In whom shall I be afraid? There is no one out there greater than my God. And if he has no back, Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Lord, you, who, who am I to go tell Pharaoh? You know he got my boys. You know he got them animals and he throwing you in the fire. You know, we can come up with all kind of reasons why we can't, but he said, go tell Pharaoh. Let my people go. Sound like a command to me. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Sound like a command to me. Now, I have to consciously, strategically figure out how I'm going to do that. Because anybody can just rattle off. Y'all know me, I can rattle all day long. But anybody can rattle off, but you got to be effective because you got to take the anointing of God with you when you go. Don't go in self. You will be in self. <coughs> but go in with the power and anointing of God. We can rest in the knowledge that the Holy Spirit who inspired the writing of the scriptures never changes. What was true a thousand years ago is still true. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. And if he wanted to save people then, he wants to save people now. There are many reasons that I could possibly give you as to why you should not be ashamed of the gospel. I'm only going to give you one today. The reason you should not be ashamed is because Jesus was not ashamed to hang on the cross and die for you. I don't know how often you think about it, but Jesus' death was not only excruciating and, and, and shameful, thinking that prior to him being nailed to the cross, he was mocked, he was beaten, he was spit upon, and he was stripped naked. Amen. Ain't nobody stripped y'all naked. What y'all shame of? He was tortured for you and I. You need to think about this sometime. It ain't all in the blessing. Give me, give me, give me. Sometime it's in the knowing Amen. of all he did for you and I. Whatever dignity a man would have, would have was completely stripped from him. Yet the Bible tells us why he did it and why you can be proud of what Jesus did for you. Consider this verse. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. 
and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes upon Jesus, the pioneer and the, and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before us, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He endured the shame. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition for sinners so that you, I, would not grow weary and lose heart. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Consider that he did all of that. And to tell you that you don't have to be ashamed, I took all the shame for you. I took it all at the cross. Don't be ashamed. Be ready. Be vigilant. Be a fighter. Put on the armor of God. And if you left it home, go back and get it and put it back on. Because you'll need the armor because you will get the darts from the enemy. But understand, he is with us always, even until the end of the earth. Jesus endured the cross with the joy that was set before him. Part of that joy was knowing that his actions was winning redemption for you. Jesus went through the shame, humiliation of the cross just for you. When you understand what he endured for your salvation, this is the heartbeat of the gospel. He loved you so much that he would not leave you in a sinful condition and had to provide a way of redemption for you. Even a great personal cost to himself. Because of this, there is a great reason not only to not be ashamed, but also to extreme to be extremely proud of your Savior. To be extremely proud of the one that would lay down his life for you. I know it's easy to get complacent. I know it's easy to get into a routine. I know it's easy to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. But sometimes it's time to shake the foundation that if what I'm doing ain't working, then I need to do something else. If what I'm doing is in my flesh and in myself, Lord, remove it and let me know what your will is. Because if I move in your will, they will be healed. There will be deliverance. There will be salvation. There will be miracle signs and wonders. But I have to move in his will and let go of my will. If he would go through that for you and for me, then we should stand tall and proclaim the gospel without any embarrassment or humiliation. Or humiliation. If he would do that for me, hey Lord and Debbie, I hope y'all don't mind me use y'all right now because I, 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 y'all just weak little and I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if Gaylord would take a bullet for you, you would see him totally different. Mm -hmm. You would say, he must really love me. That's what I'm saying today. Jesus took a bullet for us. golden gate and 
uh, you know the word I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. That's the down there. Um, understanding that he wants you to have abundant life in him. He said, I came to give you abundant life. Because I knew that you would need it to survive in this time. We've been through the hard time. We've seen the struggle. We've seen the hate. We've seen the malice. We've seen people turning on, on people. We've seen people killing people. You can't go to the grocery store without being shot. And we got time to play with this world. We got time to say I'll do it tomorrow. to go out and they went house to house preaching the gospel, healing the sick, calling those into repentance because they knew you personally, Lord, as their Lord and Savior. Heal us, O oh Lord, and we shall be healed. Save us and we shall be saved. That's what we're asking today, God. That not our will be done, but that your will be done. If we're lacking in anything, God, that you have called us to do, teach us. Your word says that the Holy Spirit that was sent to the earth to teach us all things. And if any man lack wisdom, you said ask and you would give it to them freely. So we're asking for your wisdom today how to minister. We're asking for your wisdom today how to teach. We're asking for your wisdom today how to preach, how to evangelize this nation. We're asking right now, God, in Jesus' name, and we're believing by faith that we're going to receive it for those that want to receive it. And you ask that you speak to us, Lord, in, Lord, individually of what our mandate is on this earth. And let us not leave this place but not doing what you have called us to do. Not by might, not by power, but we will move in your spirit, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. 